Guys, I'm going to tell you the truth about vehicle to grid in Australia. The truth is this, almost 80% of electric cars that you buy today can do vehicle to grid, 80% of them. So no need to email me anymore. Almost certain that the EV you've, you're buying or have already purchased is capable of vehicle to grid. Is it warranted for vehicle to grid? No, it's not. None of them are, unless you've got a Nissan Leaf and then I don't know you want to do vehicle to grid anyway. Just got an email today from some lovely people that I met up in Noosa. I just went down recently to Melbourne and met someone who has a Tesla, also another person with a Tesla in Queensland, also a, another person with a Geely EX5, another person with an Xpeng G6, all of them running vehicle to grid in Australia. Don't believe the naysayers. They're still there. Guys, I was just at the EV show in Melbourne and I'm on stage and there's this so-called consultant up there with me. I'm going um, to get in trouble for doing this. But he was saying vehicle to grid's not going to take off. It's not a good idea. Um, too, many, too many problems. Uh, it's not going to work. Well, I don't think that's accurate. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. As I just mentioned, there's lots of people now in Australia using vehicle to grid. Now, there's one big problem with it, very big problem. And I'll just go out and say what it is. The problem is this. Okay, I got an email today. Hi, Sam. It's so-and-so and so-and-so here. Uh, I'm going to tell you who they are not their names, the Solar Citizens volunteers from the Noosa EV event that I, I met these people up in uh, Noosa and we had a good chat and I had lunch with them. Thank you for lunch. Anyway, they are really pushing solar. That's what they do. So Solar Citizens, get on board, um, get online, check them out. If you just Google Solar Citizens, that'll help with the algorithms. So that will help them out. We just wanted to tell you that we now have vehicle to grid bi-directional charging in our house and it's totally awesome. SIG and store plus a BYD Addo 3 is gobbling up all my solar and more and spitting it all back out every night time. Winners are grinners. We don't pay for electricity. Keep up the great work. Best wishes. This is... Um, this. This lovely lady is actually a senior lecturer at Griffith University. So not a uh, fairly smart, intelligent person. But there are many people. You don't need to be a lecturer. You don't need to be an, an intellectual to basically get vehicle grid going. But the problem what you do have is this. Currently, the way that I know of that all these people have begun using vehicle grid and are using it now on a daily basis, using the cars I mentioned, um, there's someone with an XPN G6 doing this. There's someone with an Geely X5 doing this. There's someone with, uh, there's a, I th that I know of, there's three different people now with Teslas doing this. So that's the numbers that I know of in Australia. There's probably a lot more, but I just, they're the ones I personally know about. But the problem is they're all using um, SIG Energies, SIG and Store, and probably cost you about $16,000, but you can get an incentive. Anyway, it's, I think it's worth doing because that includes the battery and includes includes the vehicle to grid charger. There's going to be some other options soon though. Over the next 12 months, there'll be other options. But at this point, it's really the only option that I know of that's working and you can't get them right now. Basically what happened was I unintentionally promoted these guys. They, should, they I, I think that honestly, they've gotten a lot of orders from all the, all the videos that I've done about this. And they've gotten a lot of orders from others as well, charging companies, um, basically companies, battery companies, solar companies. And so what happened is these companies have gone and said, oh, you know, what do you want? And people say, well, we want vehicle to grid or we want a battery, home battery. And so the company said, okay, we'll get this SIG and store battery. And then they put the orders in with SIG Energy and SIG Energy's just said, oh, we don't have them. So you might have to wait a long time now because there's no stock in Australia that I know of. And this is a... It's a bit of a laughing stock now in Australia. A lot of the other suppliers are saying that customers are actually calling them and saying, the wait is too long. I don't want to wait for six months. Just, I want a battery. I don't care about vehicle to grid. I just want a battery. Just give me, give me something else. Give me a different brand. 
So a big, massive mis miscalculation from SIG Energy, and I think a really critical error that they've made, they're probably gonna lose massive amount of sales because of this. And customers are gonna be annoyed. They're like, well, we're on the cusp of this revolution. The government is giving $2.3 billion in subsidies, which actually will run out, believe it or not. Sounds like it won't, but it will, because there's so many people actually installing batteries now. In fact, more people are installing batteries than solar in Australia now, uh, a lot more. So the incentives will run out and it's possible that when the incentives do run out, say a year from now, I don't know when it is, but it could be a year, that um, some customers will never get the incentive for their, their new battery because their battery won't even be installed then. So that's the one problem with all of this. If they could get the stock, if they could get the batteries and the, the system, it's an integrated system, then it would be great. It would be the perfect solution. Now, getting back to the actual cars themselves, there was an article on The Driven by Giles Parkinson and got a lot of respect for Mr. Parkinson. He very, very intelligent. He says, Australian network engineer tests vehicle to grid with his Geely EX5 offers a glimpse of the future. Now, I personally spoke to this uh, engineer in Newcastle at the CSIRO and he had actually, he bought the Geely EX5 because he was basically buying a battery. That's what he said. And the Geely X5, you can get one, get them for about $40,000 for a 60 kilowatt hour lithium ion phosphate battery. So it's a very good value. If you look at it as primarily being a battery, um, it's a very good value car. Anyway, um, the Driven says this could be a landmark moment for the transition to consume energy resources in the country. Well, that's not really true because, um, you know, as you can see, there's quite a number of people doing it now. But anyway, it's huge. Scott Purnell, an innovation technology specialist at Essential Energy, G'day Scott, has revealed on his LinkedIn page that he has begun testing vehicle to grid with a SIG energy battery system, officially voiding his warranty because now everyone knows who he is. Anyhow, the system is supporting his house, topping up his household battery and exporting power to the grid. Purnell started with a trial on vehicle to grid only and then the next night he tested both the vehicle to grid and the vehicle to home functionality. He said this, I configured the EV to stop discharging once the battery reached 60% and to limit the discharge rate to three kilowatt. The car dynamically followed the energy demands of the house and when the battery hit the 60% threshold, it disconnected as expected. From that point, the home battery system seamlessly took over. Purnell says a high voltage event occurred on the grid during the test, but the SIG energy system detected the anomaly and automatically disconnected the house from the network to protect the system. This is information I did not know about, really critical. The concern could be from a warranty standpoint, if there is a high voltage uh, grid issue, could your car get zapped, right? Clearly it doesn't. This unexpected event, he said, provided the perfect opportunity to validate the vehicle to home setup in a real world scenario. The EV and home battery work together to maintain uninterrupted power demonstrating the resilience and intelligence of integrated energy systems. Guys, I would love to have this because my power just went out again last week in a storm. In fact, on the weekend, went out for, I think it was like nearly a day and my battery, my home battery ran out and I, then I ended up using my extra energy storage batteries. I've got two four kilowatt hour batteries and um, three one kilowatt hour batteries. So I was using those for the office and for the fridges and because my home battery ran out of juice because I stupidly used my sauna that day, um, which is super high power. <laughs> and I had my dryer on that day and then and the storm was there. I should have known that I shouldn't have done that. But anyway, so if I had this vehicle to grid system installed, then I would have just been using power from my car. And I still had 65% charge in my car, which means I had like um, probably 55 kilowatt hours of electricity in my car to use, which is huge. Anyhow, I think this is a great feature. He said this, uh, getting back to the article from The Driven, for the past 37 hours, my home has been running with minimal reliance on the grid, all thanks to vehicle to grid technology. With overcast skies limiting solar generation, I'd normally need to draw energy from the grid to keep things running. But now I'm able to tap into the stored energy in my EV to support my home's energy needs. This setup is more than just a backup. It's a glimpse into the future of energy resilience and smart home integration. Vehicle to grid allows me to shift from being a passive consumer to an active participant in energy management. Still early days, but the potential is very exciting. So in this graph, you can see the flow of energy, most coming from solar, flowing directly into household use. 
the home battery and the car with the battery then supplying the load and the car and the car in turn supplying the battery at different times, but mostly the load. So you can see how, you, how easy it is to go off grid. As long as you've got enough solar panels, you could definitely go off grid by just getting a vehicle to grid um, installation. Now, when you do this, you do have to buy a battery from Sick Energy. It's part of the system. You can get a small battery. So if you've already got a home battery, you can add on to it. You can get a five kilowatt hour battery from Sick Energy, and then you get the vehicle to grid charger. And that's there's also an inverter in sort of integrated into the battery system. That's how it works. It's sort of a, an interface between your home and the car. So yeah, you don't if you do already have a home battery, it doesn't mean that um, you shouldn't do this necessarily, but it does mean that um, you you sort of double dipping, but only not 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 to a bad degree. Now I have an idea. I think one. A lot of electric cars eventually people won't want to drive them because they'll be 20 years old and people don't want an old car and it'll have done 500,000 kilometers. And then that's when they're used to do things like charge the Rome, power the Rome airport. Rome's airport is powered by old EV batteries from Nissan Lease, believe it or not. It's actually the case now where recycled EV batteries are used for many things. They're powering many different places. In Germany, they've got a massive battery home. And Texas, they've got one as well. I think there's one in California. So I think in the future, households will go off grid, many of them, because you won't need to. You can just use your old EV and just have it sitting there all the time. If your old EV has a 60 kilowatt hour battery, I mean, that's the equivalent of literally four Tesla Powerwalls. And so if you, all, you, all you're really going to need is a big solar system, and then you can go off grid. And the other option is car crashes. So many cars are written off for nothing. They're written off and there's like a, a small dent in them. I don't know why, but I find, I've noticed this very common in the United States. Not as common, but it is common. More common in places like Australia. They just write cars off and then they get auctioned off for like 5,000 US dollars, like $8,000. I've seen them many times for sale. I bought mine for at auction for 8,000 and it wasn't even damaged. It was brand new. It was just left-hand drive. Anyhow, those are the, that, what's, that's what's going to happen in the future. We're going to have all these EVs just sitting there, <laughs> sitting and powering the house, right? People, so many people are going to go off grid. I think, in fact, in the future, within the next 10 to 20 years, I predict probably 10 to 20% of Australians will just go off the grid. Why would you bother? Now, of course, you'll still be technically connected to the grid. So you can still profit, you still send electricity into the grid and make money out of it between 5 to 8, 9 p.m. Um, so it's a, a nice little income earner. It's tax-free. Get free electricity, run your home free, right? As long as you've got enough solar panels. Then... In addition, you can then make money between, say, 5 to 8 p.m. by selling electricity back into the grid. Uh, there's also virtual power plants. So you want if you can sign up for those as well if you want. But you could just use Amber, right, and become your own electricity retailer, sell electricity to the grid. And remember, that's like I said, that's tax-free. That's one of the only ways in Australia you can make money tax-free. So this is going to be a, a major way that Australians in future can not only save money but actually make money as well. I think we're underrating the significance of vehicle to grid. I think we're massively underrating it. I think the Australian government doesn't really foresee what's actually about to happen. We don't need to increase our grid. The government thinks we need to triple the amount of power we have. I don't think that's actually accurate. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments.